did. As a father does. Let me go, they're awake. It's fun time, family time. So I go to the room. And I walked in and my kids are sitting on the bed next to my wife. And my wife is laying there between them, motionless, still, not responding, not reacting. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Longu back with another reaction video. So today, I'm going to be reacting to He Lost His Iman Faith, True Story. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing, commenting, and inter in just interacting with us. Without wasting any time, let's get into the video. Let me tell you a little story. Not a personal story as in my own story, but somebody I met. I was talking about this one time in the khutbah of Jumu'ah, Friday khutbah in a community in the States. Afterwards, a brother, he came up to me. And you know, sometimes people just have that look in their eye. They have that look in their eyes like they have a story to tell. He had that look. And he walked up to me and he said, Brother, what you just talked about really personally hit home for me. And I talked about the death of Khadija, the death of Abu Talib. Such a serious thing. So I said, please tell me, how did it hit home for you? I sat him down, I said, please tell me. Tell me your story. He said, brother, today was the first day that I prayed in a year. I grew up in a Muslim home. I was born in a Muslim family. I was very practicing for most of my life, praying five times a day. But today is the first time I have prayed in a year. I said, what happened? He said about a year ago, my life was picture perfect. You know, sometimes you have like a five-year plan or a 10-year plan, your grand plan. And you know when everything is falling into place, your plan is working out, everything is going according to plan. He said, I was in that part of my life. I was nearing the age of 30. I had gone through college and medical school working two jobs on the side. I had gotten married during that time, found the woman of my dreams, the love of my life. We had two beautiful small babies, children, two small children. I was in my medical residency, working 16 hours a day. And we were living in a small, tiny little apartment, not in a very good part of town. We had one car that was broken down. It kept breaking down every other day. It was very difficult. We were barely getting by. Years and years and years we got through, some way, somehow. I was now nearing the end of my medical residency. So I was starting to get offers from clinics and hospitals and doctors and groups. Very lucrative offers, six figures. Six figures, US, big deal. And things were starting to work out. I had not one but multiple offers on my desk. We had gone looking for nice homes so we could buy a house in a nice neighborhood, nice schools for our children. We went to the car dealership and we're looking at minivans and nice cars. Everything was working out. All our dreams were coming true. And he said, one day I came home a little bit earlier than schedule. I walk into my house. I said, Salaamu Alaikum, practicing family. I said, Salaamu Alaikum as the Sunnah is. And nobody responded. I looked at the time, and it was usually the time my wife would put the kids down for a nap, their afternoon nap, and she would take a nap with them as well. So I said, let them sleep. I don't want to wake them up. I don't want to disturb them. So I went, I got some food, I sat down with my books, did, did some study, answered some emails. After a while, you know when kids, they wake up and they start to kind of fuss and make noise? I heard the kids from the room. The younger one was crying, the older one was talking, I could hear them. I got very excited, as a father does. Let me go, they're awake. It's fun time, family time. So I go to the room 
And I walked in and my kids are sitting on the bed next to my wife. And my wife is laying there between them, motionless, still, not responding, not reacting. And it looked wrong. Being a doctor, I jumped right in and I checked her and she had been dead. Not now, but for like an hour. She was cold, she was gone. Just like that. He said, brother, at that moment, my life, it fell apart. I lost the love of my life. My children lost their mother. And I lost my faith, my Iman. He said, for the next, he said, the next 24 hours were a blur. Janaza, Tadfin, the burial, it went by. I didn't even realize what was going on. After that 24 hours ended and we buried her, I went to my room and I locked myself in my room and I did not come out of my room for days. I kept the lights off and I just laid in my room and stared at the ceiling. I did not hold my own children in my own hands for the next few days. My mother and my brother were taking care of my babies. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. After a few days, I crawled out of bed. I reconnected with my children. I tried to get back to work, figure out how am I supposed to work and take care of my kids. My mother and my brother, they helped me so much. Slowly but surely over the weeks and the months, I put my life back together again. I got back to work. I figured out the schedule for the children. And I started figuring things out, but there was one thing that was still missing. One thing I could not figure out. One thing I could not solve. My Iman was gone. My faith had been broken. I stopped praying. I no longer had faith. I was struggling. And he said, my brother, who wasn't just somebody who just showed up and just told me what to do. You know, some people when they give advice, they're never there for you. They never help you. They don't support you. They just show up and tell you what to do. My brother was not like that. He looked after my kids. He stayed awake with my babies when I had to go to the hospital for a call. He's somebody who took care of me and my kids. I respect him. I love him. And he's very pious, very righteous. He prays. He kept telling me every single day, brother, come on, you need to pray. Brother, come on, you need to pray. But I kept resisting and refusing. He said, this morning, today, he showed up at my house and he said, I am not taking no for an answer. Mother will watch the children. You are coming to the masjid with me. You will come to Jumu'ah, you will put your face on the ground before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will pray. You will make sujood, you will say Allahu Akbar and that hole in your heart will be filled. And he said, and I came to the Jumu'ah, the Friday prayer, I heard the khutbah and you were telling the story of the Prophet sallallahu how he lost the, the mother of his children, how he lost the love of his life. And I found the answer to my question. It made sense to me again. Think about this. After going through so much tragedy, how does somebody continue? How does the Prophet ﷺ wake up the next day, go out there and preach harder than he did yesterday, work harder than he did ever before, knowing that he's gonna come home to an empty home, knowing that he's gonna come home to an empty bed, knowing that he's gonna come home and have to look his children in the face and wipe the tears from their face that their mother is not coming back. How did he persevere? How did he continue? It was at that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided him a solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him on the most miraculous journey any human being has ever experienced. It is called the journey of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. The journey by night to Jerusalem and then the ascension above the heavens. The journey by night to Al-Aqsa and then the ascension above the heavens. And there he got closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than any creation of Allah has ever gotten. Even Jibreel alayhi salam stopped at Sidratul Muntah and he said that you are to go forward from here. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet sallallahu a gift. And that gift was the five times daily prayer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet ﷺ, difficulties will come, adversity will knock your door, tragedies will befall you. 
But every single time you fall, stand back up and say Allahu Akbar. Every single time you deal with a difficulty, say Allahu Akbar. Salah will heal your wounds. It'll solve your problems. It'll ease your difficulties. That was a, a sad but very nice video. Um, things in life are bound, are bound to happen. We're, about, we're bound to experience certain things in life that are going to remind us, that are going to try us. We're on this earth to be tried. So if tragedy befalls us, it's important to keep our faith. It's important to know that even though I'm going through these things, I can still make it out of this thing. It's just a passing phase. I'd like to say, I'm going through this now, but tomorrow my situation is going to change. I have to believe you have to have the faith, hope, and trust that things will change or that God is going to turn around things in your life. Also, sometimes it actually helps to have someone who believes in you. Some people, people that won't let you go saying, fine, he doesn't want to believe in prayer. He doesn't want to believe in God let him live his life there's always that one person that's pushing you to, or reminding you of the good things in life i always say prayer is quite an essential part of life i don't think you can live without prayer i just don't think you can i mean it's my opinion at least that's what i think pray make sure the words you're saying you believe in them you want to be a good person in life and that's your prayer do good things practice so that you can achieve that goodness that you want to achieve out of the prayer that you say. Have faith that whatever you say in prayer is going to happen. Sometimes bad things happen when we're very low, feeling low. Sometimes bad things happen when we're feeling alright. And I just don't want to focus on the bad, but also sometimes things happen with whether you're in a happy place or not. And even if it happens, remember to pray. Sometimes it's just important to thank God and say thank you for this or I'm going through this but I know I'm going to stand up dust myself off and be on my feet like a boss um, this was a good video make sure to give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe if you've got any suggestions that are like this leave them down in the comment section and I'll see you in my next reaction video Thank you.